Uh, we finished up the Mustang last week. Uh, we've got it running. We did a little bit of tuning to it. Uh, we don't have any footage of uh, the car running yet, but uh, actually if you follow on Instagram, uh, you'll actually get to see some of that. So running videos coming soon. Uh, a couple of things we had to address first. The car is definitely going to need some upgraded cooling because uh, it runs a little bit warmer than what you want to do with aluminum heads. And uh, if we get stuck in this Maryland traffic, it's going to overheat. So uh, I went on Amazon. I took a chance. I bought a $150 three-core uh, aluminum radiator that came with uh, two electric fans. So we'll actually be converting from the stock clutch fan to electric fans. And we're going to go over that today. So here's a look at the radiator. Um, I think any radiator that you see on eBay or Amazon, it's you know between like $130 and $200 is probably this quality. It's probably the exact same radiator. Uh, some of the folks with these lower end radiators report that they leak after like three years of use. Uh, to be honest, if I get one year out of this thing, I'll be totally happy and then I can get something much better later on because I wasn't even expecting to have to buy this. Um, I really just wanted to keep things as simple as possible and stick with the clutch fan, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But these fans, which looked really cheap in the pictures, are actually made of uh, a really solid plastic. If anybody, if any of you guys are into RC trucks, uh, this is what they call RPM. This is like unbreakable plastic. Uh, I don't know if you can see the grain here in this picture, but this stuff is solid. This is the stuff they make Pelican cases out of. Um, so when you're putting electric fans on your car, you want to make sure that you know whether or not they're pusher or puller fans, um, which basically means the direction that the fans go on, uh, whether they go in the front or the back. These appear to be puller fans. They didn't come with any directions, but these should go on the back of the radiator uh, based on the way that they look and based on their pictures. Uh, don't mind the thumb. I actually ripped my fingernail off messing with vacuum lines in this car. Uh, be careful. Don't rip your fingernail. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Uh, before you go and take any belts off, you want to break these bolts loose here. These bolts connect the fan and the pulley. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and take these uh, bolts off the tensioner and get those nice and loose. Okay, all four bolts are loose. Uh, before we go any further, we're actually going to go ahead and take out this drain plug and drain out the radiator fluid. It's important to note at this step, make sure you don't do this on a hot car because uh, you don't want to burn yourself and you don't want to cause your radiator to explode in your face and cause all type of burns. And uh, the other thing is make sure that you're uh, collecting your fluid uh, and you don't have any animals around because they love to drink this stuff and then they die. So you really don't want that to happen to your pets. So it's really simple to drain the fluid. Uh, you don't even have to unscrew this all the way, but since I won't be using this again, I'm just going to take it out and uh, probably put it in the trash if nobody wants this radiator. So as you can see, that's all you have to do to get it to drain. We're going to take the plug all the way out. And also to let it drain more quickly, if you want to take off the radiator cap. There it goes. While that's still draining out, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our upper radiator hose. And we're going to allow that to drain into the pan as well. Okay, now if you have a stubborn hose, like you see that I have, just take yourself a flathead. Don't go nuts with it, but just kind of get it in there and help the hose to get moving. And this thing was just off last week. All right. Don't forget to disconnect this overflow line here. Be careful when you disconnect it because uh, when you let it go, and if you have any overflow in there, it's going to run onto your floor. So just be careful when you pull that line off. All right. Next up, actually removing your radiator, you're going to use a 10 mil, trusty 10 mil. You're going to pop these little brackets off. And these little brackets are pretty much the only thing that holds your radiator on. There's nothing down at the bottom that holds it on. At least not as far as I know of. So now the radiator is loose. 
save these because you still need them. Um, now to get the radiator out of here, you actually have to pull the radiator and the fan out at the same time. In order to get the fan out, we have to pull the belt off. So in, in order to do that, uh, what I like to do is just to take a uh, breaker bar, put it in between the tensioner like so, and pull it to the side to get the tensioner to come up. All right, with the belt removed, you can go ahead and pull your four screws out. Save these screws. You still need them to put the uh, pulley back on. Don't throw them in tall grass because you still need them again. So with the screws out, your fan is ready to just really just pop off. And now you can actually lift your entire fan, radiator, and shroud out as one unit. All right, so anytime you're changing out parts, it's always a good practice to compare the old part to the new part going in, and uh, just so you know what you're dealing with. So as you can see here, the, uh, the top hose is on the uh, passenger side, the lower hose is on the uh, driver's side, just like it is on this one. Same configuration. Um, and then as you see here, you've also got the holes on here, so if I wanted to, I actually could reattach my shroud and overflow reservoir. Obviously this coolant hose is going to have to transfer over. Alright, so as you can see the new radiator is mocked into place. It's going to drill new holes. Um, as you can see there's plenty of space down there for the fans to go so I'm not even going to bother about trying to stick those in there right now. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drill holes. I didn't even have to drill holes in the core support, I just used the ones that were actually already there for the uh, wiring harness. I just stuck the drill bit through them and cleaned them up a little bit, but uh, these holes were already there and I just matched them up to these new holes that I made. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie this harness up just so that it's out of the way and it's not jiggling around. Alright, so we're back from the store. Uh, we've got three gallons of distilled water here. You want to use distilled water to keep corrosion from happening inside your coolant passages. Um, we have the concentrated coolant uh, because it's actually cheaper. The concentrated stuff costs as much as the 50-50 mix and you're essentially getting twice as much. You just have to buy water. Uh, we got some red racing tires. Uh, I'll figure out where I can use those somewhere in the engine bay since all the accents are red inside the engine bay. Oh. And most importantly, we have primary wire. Uh, you have to use primary wire when you wire uh, radiator fans. The last time I wired a radiator fan and tried to get away with using regular wire it burned up immediately and uh, the first time I used it so you have to use primary wire. This stuff is heat resistant um, it, it's made to take a lot more current than whatever you probably have laying around so don't skimp on your wire because it's gonna burn up and then your fans are gonna break then you're gonna overheat. Primary wire for fans. Alright so the fans are wired up nice and pretty so that's how they're going to sit. Hopefully the wires are not crossed and they're, got, um, they're on the correct polarity. So we're just going to give this thing a quick test fire and make sure that they're blowing in this direction towards me. Alright, now that we've verified that the fan is going in the correct direction, we're going to go ahead and put our radiator where it's going to sit. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our red racing ties. for weight savings. We're going to go ahead and throw our water pump pulley back on and that's going to get bolted in place. And the bolts will thread in fine, you won't need any extra washers or spacers or anything. Alright, so you've got your pulley bolted in there and uh, we went ahead and put the belt back on. So now that the belt is on, you want to go ahead and make sure that you torque these things down nice and tight. I do have the coolant reservoir jerry-rigged in there. You know, I'm definitely not okay with this setup. It does work, but uh, I, I definitely want to get that out of there. So the last thing you're going to need to do on here is add your radiator fluid. Uh, you're going to take, make sure you take your uh, concentrate and mix it 50-50 with water.
Okay, now once you've gotten your radiator full uh, to the top of the cap, getting the system bled and actually getting the coolant to flow is going to be the challenging part. Uh, definitely leave with me in the comment section your best methods. Um, what I try to do is when the car is running, you squeeze and work the hose to try and get it to cycle through. Uh, before I actually start it up, I disconnect the hose from here, hold it straight up in the air, and fill it with coolant manually. Uh, the bottom hose fills on its own, and the last strategy that I have, which you'll see in just a second, is I jack the car up on the driver's side as far as I can get it, and that gets the coolant to actually flow the way that it needs to go. Uh, the other thing is you need the motor to be running in order for the thermostat to open, and it will actually push coolant back into the motor, and you also want to have your heater running. So those are a few things to try. I don't know the official method. If you know a better method than what I'm telling you, definitely leave it in the comments for me. All right, so as you can see, the car's jacked up on the side as, mu as much as I can get it. Uh, the radiator is open at this time. And what I'm gonna do is wait for that water level to actually drop down. When the car gets the temperature, the thermostat's gonna open, the water level's gonna drop down, and I'm gonna add more water to it. All right, YouTube, so like a week has passed and uh, I decided to go ahead and get uh, shrouded fans. Uh, as soon as I posted it up on Instagram, some folks jumped on my back and told me that I shouldn't be running my fans the way that I had showed you guys. So we have the shroud. Uh, it's going to cool a lot better with the shroud. So I've actually done some testing and the uh, fan configuration as it is now is working, but it's barely working. So hopefully this thing will bring it up to standard and uh, it'll be nice. Okay, so I've got the new shroud mocked into place, but I do have a problem here. Um, as you can see, these clips are holding it back from making a uh, direct seal against the radiator. That gap right there is going to kill what these fans are doing. Um, so I'm going to go on down to the hardware store and purchase some uh, weather stripping and get that to seal nice and airtight against the radiator. And All right, so now we've got these uh, radiator fans properly insulated. Uh, just get yourself a uh, packet of this stuff from Home Depot or Lowe's, go around the edge with it, and then uh, you're going to take these little mounting points and uh, you're going to mount them to the built-in mounting points on your radiator uh, with your trusty racing ties, and uh, then we're going to reconnect our wires. So here's the final piece of the puzzle. This is the custom uh, hot rod style overflow tank and uh, basically it's the same as a regular overflow tank it's just a little bit smaller you can get these things in all different sizes the shorter hose is just the, your regular uh, inlet outlet hose and then the longer hose is actually the uh, drain hose or the puke hose and all you got to do is just hook up that short line to the uh, line connecting to the radiator and uh, that's pretty much it and then find, find a spot to mount it so we're gonna go do that in a second we already mocked this up in the bay I did that off camera and uh, went ahead and bolted it directly to the shroud so we're gonna drop the shroud back in reattach that and uh, put the line on the drain side this is the drain and this is the in and out line so reattach that and it'll be good to go all right folks I didn't actually take time to uh, finish out the video yesterday after I installed the uh, the overflow tank uh, basically just to summarize what's going on from start to finish uh, this video actually covers like two weeks. Uh, not really because of any particular reason, it's just the, the beauty of actually having a project car. You don't have to fix it in one night. Plus I was ordering parts uh, and learning things as I went along with the radiator. So just to sum it, everything up, uh, we swapped to the aluminum radiator. Uh, we put in a custom overflow tank. Um, we tried it out with just fans by themselves and then uh, we went ahead and we put the shrouded fans on there uh, so just to sum up how everything worked I did actually drive the car in each configuration uh, the fans by themselves barely worked they kept the car from overheating but that's all they did um, when I switched to the shrouded fans they actually controlled the temperature a lot better uh, I ran the car hard it was about 60 degrees and the fans were able to keep the car from going over, uh, I don't know, maybe 205. Uh, just riding around, my temperature stayed at about 
195, which I feel like it should be a lot lower because uh, folks with a similar configuration are able to keep their temperatures under 180. So, uh, so a fun fact for you, coolant is actually not the best thing for keeping your engine cool. Uh, use a lot of concentrate and less water. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is actually trying to swap that out. I may leave a little bit of coolant in there, but I'm gonna try and put more distilled water and the water wetter and see if I can get my car to run as close to 170 as possible. Um, if anybody out there is gonna suggest a 160 degree thermostat, um, I've definitely done reading on that and 160s are just a bad idea in general. I do need to check my thermostat because I may have a stock 192 degree thermostat, so I'm gonna buy a new one and make sure I have a 180. So uh, other than that, thanks for watching, stay tuned. Uh, drift action is coming, I promise.